Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Contain on your husky. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon in their relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns, and the Mutual Broadcasting System presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Last year, there was an average of 500 forest fires every day in the United States. The forest burned would make a strip nearly a mile wide around the Earth at the equator. Ninety percent of these destructive fires were the result of carelessness on someone's part. The lighted cigarette carelessly flipped out the car window. A campfire left untended. A lighted match thrown into a drift of dry leaves. Or any one of many other thoughtless acts that can cause a fire. When you were out in the woods... Here are four simple rules of fire prevention to follow. Crush out cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two after using. Drown all campfires. Then stir up and drown again. Always be sure to find out the law before using fire. By following these simple precautions, you will be doing your part in the prevention of costly forest fires that we can't afford. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Summer was coming to a close in the Yukon Territory. Two men rode the trail from Bear Landing to Selkirk and talked of how they hoped to gain quick wealth in the North Country. Brock, the prospectors have been flocking to the bank in Selkirk during the past month for their summer chase. This would be a good time for us to go to that bank and make a strike of our own. Yeah, I know, Jerry. We've got to be sure we get away with it. First thing we'll do is to check and find out if the constable is away from town like we're hurting you. <laughs> you don't have to worry, Brock. I know the constable's out of town. But how could you be so sure? Well, the fact is, I sent an Indian to tell the constable there was trouble at Goose River. And since he's the only Mountie around Selkirk right now, he left town and went to Goose River yesterday afternoon. <laughs> hey, you sure used your head that time, Jerry. When do we pull that bank robbery? Well, let's see. It's late afternoon. We'll soon be in Selkirk. We'll go into the bank later today. And there aren't many people there. And we'll be mighty far away before the constable gets back to town. Get a move on, huh? Right. Get up there. Come on, get up there, boy. Up. Later in Selkirk, there were only a couple of prospectors in the bank as Jerry and Brock entered and approached the teller's window. What can I do for you, mister? Leach, this is a hold up. Hey, I got the others covered. All right, you come up from behind there. And line up with those two over there. Hurry. Sure. Sure, Mr. All right, watch him. Right. Keep an eye on the door. I'll go back to the counter and put those sacks of gold in this carpet bag. All right, hurry it up. All right. Man, I got the gold. Let's get out of here quick. Wait. I'm not going to let you get away with me. Get that. out of my way, you. All right, let's go. Come on. All right. That evening, Sergeant Preston, with his great dog, Yukon King, arrived in Selkirk. He learned the constable was out of town and heard about the robbery. Preston rode to the bank to get further information about the holdup. He received the details and the description of the two crooks. He learned the men were strangers, and he knew it would be difficult to pick up their trail since many others had gone in and out of the bank. Sergeant Preston was talking to the teller. So many people have been in and out of here, both before and after the holdup. It's impossible for King to pick up the scent. You mean there isn't any way for him to find them? Not unless he could get the scent from something one of the crooks was wearing or it held in his hand. Then King could follow it. Say... I grabbed it to one who carried the gold just before he cracked me over the head. Huh? I had this bandana in my hand when I came to. You sure this belongs to one of the thieves? Yes, yes. I grabbed it his coat, and I must have hung on to this when I fell. And we really do have something to go on. Let's give King the scent. 
I will try to pick up their trail in front of the bank. Come along, King. <laughs> out in front of the building, Sergeant Preston held out the bandana to King. The intelligent husky sniffed at it a moment. Then Preston spoke. Find him, King. Fine, boy. <laughs> For a moment, the great dog sniffed the ground, then gave a short bark to indicate he had the scent. <laughs> the big husky started along the main street until he came to a space between two buildings into which he turned. Then he stopped and sniffed again. Oh, I must have mounted horses here. I can see the hoof marks. Come along, King. I'll get Blackie, and then we'll go on from this point. <laughs> the two crooks, Jerry and Brock, had ridden several miles from Selkirk to a settlement called Indian Run. They stopped there a short time for food and rest. And then they continued on a short distance until they reached a branch trail. Jerry called the horse. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what are we stopping for, Jerry? See that branch trail, Brock? Yeah, that's it. It goes over to two miles. Well, from there, we'll double back to Selkirk. We'll stop at two miles at the wayside inn and shave off our whiskers. Then we'll go on to Selkirk. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea, Jerry. Sure it is. Selkirk is the last place anyone would think of hunting us. We'll put up at some small waterfront hotel and wait till the boat from Dawson dock. Then we'll book passage for the state and clear out. Well, let's get going, eh? Get up, get on, get up there, boy. Get up. A few hours later, Sergeant Preston and King reached the branch trail beyond Indian Run, where the crooks had turned off. At that point, King stopped a moment, sniffing the air. Sergeant Preston rang to a halt. Who are you? Who are you? What's the trouble, King? <laughs> huh? The way you're acting, King, I'd say they turned off onto the branch trail. The big husky stood another moment and then started along the branch trail, whining and looking back. <laughs> All right, fella, go ahead. I know you must be right, although it looks as if they headed back towards Selkirk. Get going, boy. <laughs> Come on, Blackie. <laughs> when Jerry and Brock again arrived in Selkirk with clean-shaven faces, they rode along the waterfront until they reached a cheap and shoddy hotel. They left their horses in the shed behind the building, then went inside and spoke to the disreputable-looking woman who ran the place. Evening, Millie. Remember me? Hey, you do look familiar, mister, but I, I can't... I used to have whiskers a couple of hours ago. I stayed here when I first came to the territory. I'm Jerry Collins. Oh, yeah, sure. I remember you, Jerry. Haven't seen you for some time, though. Where have you been keeping yourself? I never stay long in one place, Millie. Oh, this is a friend of mine, Brock Atkins. Hi, Millie. I'm glad to know you. How come you two are traveling around so early in the morning? I only got in town on a short trip. They tell me something. Do you know if the constable is in town now? Yeah. Yeah, he is. And he got me out of bed an hour earlier this morning. He came here asking questions because of a bank robbery that happened at supper time last night. Hmm, I see. Um, have you got a room for us? Sure. Let's go. One, two, five. First room on the left. Here's the key. Thanks. Uh, how long are you going to stay here? Well, that depends. Oh, by the way, if anyone comes asking questions, we've been here for a long time. Get it? Yeah. How long, Jerry? Oh, two weeks or so. Oh. Well, in that case, you owe me 50 bucks. Hey, what do you mean we owe you 50? Oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> You're smart, Millie. Yeah. Here, this ought to be enough to keep you quiet. Yeah, thanks. Like I said, you've been here two weeks. And by the way, maybe you'd like to know another Mountie came to town last night. Huh? Sergeant Preston, that big dog of his. Sergeant Preston? Holy him I thought he was in Dawson. Well, all I know is he came to town last night. Then he and that dog of his took out after the two crooks who robbed the bank. Mm. I thought you two uh, gentlemen would like to know. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Millie. Go to our room now, Brock. Yeah. Hey, Jerry. I don't like what we heard about Preston that muddy. Ah, stop worrying. But I hear that Husky's mighty smart at trailing. Uh, I think we'd better not wait for the river packet, Jerry. We ought to find some other way to leave town right away. Maybe you're right. But if Preston picks up our trail somehow, leaving one of our horses won't help. Yeah, I know that. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Remember the window, Brock. What are you looking at? Look down there at the dock. 
See that big fishing boat? Yeah, what about it? That's the boat that put in at Bear Landing two weeks ago, remember? I introduced you to the skipper, who's a friend of mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. And the way smoke's pouring from the boat, I'd say they're fixing to leave. He'll head back up the river. And we could go with him if we pay him. Hey, that's the answer, all right. We'll duck out the back way now and head to the dock right away. No use taking chances on someone spotting us going out the front. Well, what about our horses? We'll have to leave them here with Millie. With all the gold we have, we can afford to forget them. Let's go talk to the skipper of that boat right now. We... We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, mothers, take it from the kids. The breakfast treat that can't be beat is Quaker Pop Rice and Quaker Pop Wheat. They're the winner for sure. First of all, they're the winner for crisp, delicious taste. Because they're the ones shot from guns. Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. They're popped to perfection. And they're the winner for sunny natural flavor. A harvest of flavor that Mother Nature herself puts into the good, wholesome grain. So when Dad and the youngsters pour out a bowl full of swell-tasting Quaker Pop Rice or Quaker Pop Wheat, you can be sure there's no factory sweetening, no sugar added. Yes, that's the beauty of Quaker Pop Rice and Wheat. The youngsters like to put sugar on them themselves, lots of it. And the grown-ups in the family may want to put on less sugar to suit their taste. Yes, look tomorrow at your store for delicious Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice. You can spot them in the familiar packages with the picture of the big gun on the front. Now to continue. Jerry and Brock, carrying the carpet bag of gold, left the small hotel through the back door and hurried to the dock where the big fishing boat was moored. Let's go aboard, eh? Hey, what are you two doing aboard? Hi, Skipper. <laughs> I reckon you don't know me without my beard. Well, I don't. Sure, sure. Now I know. <laughs> You're Jerry. Yep. How come you shaved off the beard? I had a good reason. You fixing to make a run up the river soon? Uh-huh. Leaving in about an hour. Why? My friend and I want to make a deal about going along. Now, look, uh, you know we have an accommodation for passengers. Why don't you take them the regular boat? It'll be here in a day or two. Now, look, do you want to take us or don't you? Uh, for cash. Now, listen, I'm not as dumb as you think I am, Jerry. I figure you must be running out on the law. In that case, I'd be taking a big chance carrying you. Now, of course, for, uh, say, a hundred dollars a piece, I might do it. Holy catfish. Two hundred to take us twenty miles? Shut up, Brock. But he... Skipper, we'll pay you the two hundred in gold. In gold, huh? <laughs> I guess I hit the nail on the head. Sure, I admit we're running out on the law. Let's go into the cabin and we'll pay you. Well, Brock, even if that Mountie Preston did pick up our trail, he and that mud of his will be stumped once we leave on this fishing boat. <laughs> Come on, let's get inside. It was almost an hour later when Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the Waterfront Hotel and entered. Oh, hi, Sergeant. Looking for somebody? Yes, I am. Two men. One tall with heavy black hair and the other stocky with red hair. Both of them bearded. Sorry, don't have anybody staying here that answers the descriptions you just gave. Sure of that? Mm-hmm, positive. Oh, what do you want them for? Bank robbery. Oh, I heard about that robbery last night. Seems to me you're wasting your time hunting for those crooks here in town, Sergeant. They probably lit out for some faraway place. I believe they're in town, right here in this hotel. Whatever gave you that idea, Sergeant. <laughs> My dog went along that car there. What is it, King? Oh, wait a minute, Sergeant. I told you those men you want aren't here. You had no right to... <laughs> oh, I sailed into this room. I'll complain to headquarters the way you come in here disturbing Stand the guests. Stand back and sit to... quiet, Nellie. You're likely to talk yourself into real trouble. Open in the name of the law. Reckon nobody's in there. I'll see. Wait, both of you. Oh. Room's vacant. <laughs> Reckon they're out right now. The men in this room have been here for two weeks, straight through. Really? No baggage here. And nothing in the closet. 
They must have taken the carpet bag with them. I didn't see them go out. They didn't pass the day. Look here, Millie. You've been lying to me. You know the men who were here are the cooks I'm hunting. I ought to take you in for questioning. Uh, no, no, please, Sergeant. I, uh, well, I did sort of lie a little, but I just didn't want to have trouble in the hotel. Uh, they must have slipped out the back door. We'll find out. Come on, King. <laughs> this way, boy. The back door. <laughs> the center, eh, King? All right, we'll pick up their trail from there. Sergeant Preston went quickly to the front of the hotel and mounted his horse. Then he followed King, who was heading for the dock. Great dog unerringly went to the dock where the fishing boat had been moored. As Preston approached, a boat was still sounding. He saw the big fishing boat heading away from the dock. Oh, Buggy. <laughs> Boat's too far out. I'm sure those cooks are on it, boy. <laughs> Never mind, we'll get them yet. Come on, King. Sergeant Preston mounted Blackie and rode to the constable's office a short distance up the street. The constable joined Sergeant Preston. And then the two Mounties and the dog set out along the river trail. Meantime, in the cabin aboard the fishing boat, Jerry and Brock, the two crooks, were talking to the skipper and his wife, Flora. Now, we'll be putting in a fair landing this evening. That's where you'll get off and wait for the next river packet to the state. That's right. What's this all about, anyway? Are you boys mixed up in something that's against the law? That's none of your business, Laura. Oh, no? Well, if you think I'm going to let these two get us into trouble, you're free. I don't like all this monkey business. Oh, stop yapping. You talked me into letting you sail on this trawler with me, and you've been talking ever since. You don't even give me a chance to think anymore. Yes. Someday you'll sit in a jail cell with plenty of chance to think if you don't watch out who you take on this boat. Look, why don't you go and relieve Jake at the wheel a while? You might as well run the boat as you think you do. <laughs> Wheel a while is better than sitting here looking at these two log jumpers. Shut up and give your jaws a rest. They paid for coming aboard. We sure did. Two hundred and gold. Gold, huh? Right. <laughs> you probably stole it someplace. Neither one of you would try to work a claim. Look, you better beat it before we get sore, Flora. Go ahead and get sore if you want to. When I have something to say, I say it regardless. Uh, I'll go relieve Jake at the wheel now. We pay two hundred. All right, boys. As Flora stepped on deck. She walked slowly toward the wheelhouse, but she casually scanned the shoreline. Then, hearing a dog barking, she focused her eyes on the shore trail. Looks like a big wolf running along the shore trail. I wonder if a, a couple of horsemen following that animal. I see a mouse. I see the red coat. They must be trailing somebody. For Pete's sake, I thought you went I came already. back to tell you there are a couple of Mounties riding the shore trail. What? They're right opposite the boat on the starboard side. A couple of Mounties, you say? Yeah, you think they're wise and we're on his boat? Yeah. I knew you two were up to something. Get up and get out of the way. I told you to button your lips, Laura. It's none of your business. Laura's right. I can see him. Oh, wait, there's a big dog. One of those Mounties must be Sergeant Preston. That means he knows we're aboard here. We can't stop at Bear Landing now, fellas. We've got to figure some way to get off this boat, too, before we get into trouble. Hey, don't be local. How are we going to get off? Go over the port side and swim for the opposite shore. You're crazy. You must be joking. Look, like Flora said, we don't want any trouble with the law. And I'm not crazy or joking either. Now, this gun says you both go over the side and swim for it. Do you understand? No, no. Wait. Take it easy, Skipper. Put up the gun. Anyhow, I can't swim. And I don't intend to. Oh, oh, my leg! Oh, I got his gun. That was quick oh, taken, Terry. You got my husband. Oh. Shut up, you. Oh. We're running this boat now. We'll all get inside. Help the skipper in, Flora, oh. and then you stay there. Let's go. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Have you been wishing you could actually see Sergeant Preston in action? See him riding his big black horse, Rex, capturing lawbreakers with the help of his courageous dog, Yukon King? And when winter comes, would you like to actually see the terrifying avalanches and snow slides in the coldest country of the North? Actually see a pack of huskies pulling a dog sled over endless snowdrifts? Well, listen to this. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon goes on television next week. These exciting news stories of courage, bravery, romance, mystery will fascinate men, women, boys, and girls. And will be brought to you on a coast-to-coast -coast TV network starting next Thursday, September 29th by all the Quaker cereals. Quaker puffed wheat and rice, Quaker oats and mother's oats, Muffet shredded wheat, and Quaker Paco 10. Now, did you get that date? Write it down. It's next Thursday evening, September 29th. 
the premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television. It's something new and different in television for the whole family. Check your newspaper for the time and the station nearest you. Now to continue. The two Maldives on the shore had seen the figures at the boat rail and had heard both the shot and Flora's cry for help. What do we do, Sergeant? Let's hurry ahead to that point of land. The boat should pass close to the point. We may be able to find some way to get aboard. Let's hurry. Come on, Blackie. Get up for it. The two crooks, Jerry and Brock, had forced Flora into the cabin, and the wounded skipper was put onto a bunk. I told you not to trust those crooks, didn't I? Oh, just fix that bandaging. Keep quiet, Flora. Hey, wait a minute, Brock. You notice something? What? The boat has changed course. Huh? It seems to be moving toward shore. Hey, that's right, Jerry. Go forward with your gun and take over the wheel. Yeah. Then head for the opposite shore and put in at the first yeah. place you come to. We've got to shake off those mollies, not the way to do it. Get going now. Oh, right away. A few minutes later, Brock appeared in the doorway of the small wheelhouse with a gun in his hand. All right, you. What's it? I'm taking over in here. So you two are causing the trouble aboard, is that it? Stop stalling. Swing the boat back in the midstream. Then I'll take over. All right. You aren't uh... going to do anything, mister. <laughs> the man at the wheel made a sudden <laughs> lunge toward Brock. Hey, I'll... Uh, fix my shoulder. I'll fix you for that. Uh... Brock, having dropped his gun, fought furiously to hold off the fisherman so he could pick up the weapon. Meanwhile... Preston and the constable had pulled to a stop on the point and dismounted. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. I heard another shot. Yes. Look at the boat now, heading right to this point. Two men are fighting in the wheelhouse. In a couple of minutes, the boat will run aground here. We'll get aboard when it does. Come on, we'll get as close as we can. Come along, King. Oh, oh. Two mouthies crouched behind some boulders near the water's edge. And with guns ready, waited for the boat to run aground. They watched as the boat drew nearer and could plainly see the struggle going on in the wheelhouse. A moment later, the boat crashed against the bank. All right, let's get aboard. Come on, King. <laughs> as the two Mounties leaped from the shore to the bow of the boat, Jerry appeared in the doorway of the cabin with his gun. Hey, look out, Sergeant. That man in the cabin doorway. All right, send him inside. Get to those men in the wheelhouse and cover them, Constable. Take and I'll go to the cabin. Right. Let's go, King. <laughs> Pressing himself close to the wall of the superstructure, Preston slowly made his way toward the cabin door, with King moving alongside him. Inside the cabin, Flora moved toward a sea chest, while Jerry was busy at the doorway. The crook turned just as she opened it and covered her with his gun. Hey, what are you after? Get away from that chest. You're that friend of yours that wrecked our boat. If I get my hands on a get gun... Get back I... there beside the skipper and stay there. Go on. <laughs> Quickly, Jerry went to the sea chest and took out a gun. Just as he straightened up, Sergeant Preston appeared in the doorway. Preston, drop those guns, you dirty mouthy out. Hold it. Oh, my arm. I'll get his gun, Sergeant. Careful, don't walk between us. Come here, you. The sergeant's oh, warning came too late. Flora oh, momentarily shielded the wounded crook from the mouthy. Jerry quickly picked up one of his guns and placed it against Flora's back. All right, Mouthy. If you don't want me to shoot the woman, move into the cabin and stand to the side now. Hurry. Sergeant, he'll kill me if you don't. All right, Flora. Stand right there. Now drop your gun, Mouthy. Preston paused a moment. Then, seeing the great dog King slinking along the cabin wall in Jerry's direction, he remarked, All right, you have the upper hand. There it is. Good. Now, Flora, you get over there beside the mounting. Jerry didn't notice the big husky as he moved closer. Suddenly, King sprang from one side with a deep growl, stabbing Jerry's arm. Oh, 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 take him away. Oh, oh it's King, down, boy. Watch him. Don't take his gun. Uh. Hey, Scully, for a minute I thought he had. All right, get inside, folks. Yeah, yeah. All right. He's the two fighting in the wheelhouse. Oh, that big guy is one of my men. The other one's a crook. These yeah. two crooks caused all the trouble. They shot my husband because we objected to having him aboard. Yeah, they paid me to carry him on this trip, but I got suspicious. I see. We'll tie them and fix their wounds, and we'll take these two back to Selkirk and put them behind bars. Sergeant, here's the carpet bag containing the stolen gold. Good, that's the evidence we need. We arrest you two in the name of the Crown for armed robbery. Oh, it's going to cost me plenty to fix my boat. <sighs> Maybe that'll teach you to be more careful who you take aboard after this. You can make repairs so as to get us to Bear Landing. I were lucky we're alive. If it hadn't been for these Maldives and that dog. That darn mutt trailer's everywhere. <laughs> Didn't do you a bit of good trying to get away on this boat. I said we'd have trouble because of you two crooks, and I was right. Now we got a wrecked boat. Oh, a... shut up before you make a nervous wreck out of me with that eternal yapper. 
the sergeant had been married to you, he might have looked the other way when Jerry threatened to shoot you. I wouldn't think of doing such a thing, Skipper. Huh. <laughs> Wonder just how he meant that. <laughs> I can guess. And you better shut up before you get a straight answer. Well, let's go, Constable. I'll be glad to get these cooks to jail and say this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The thrilling new radio adventures of Rin Tin Tin take place in the post-Civil War era of the 1870s, when the Old West was truly wild, the most dangerous territory in America. Indian tribes made hostile by the white man's westward expansion and the invasion of their traditional hunting grounds made life particularly uneasy in Fort Apache, a military post deep in Indian country. This, then, is the setting of radio's Rin Tin Tin series, where the famous dog hero, his ten-year-old master, Rusty, and their appointed guardian, Lieutenant Rip Masters, find that frontier life is far from monotonous. You won't want to miss the stories of this wonder dog, famous for generations. Youngsters love Rin Tin Tin, and the grown-ups will also enjoy the thrilling adventures of a boy and his dog. Be sure to listen every Sunday afternoon over most of Mutual's 573 stations across the country. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, have you ever heard of Solitaire Jackson? Why, yes, sir. He's an American who recently finished a prison term in the States. Understand he came to the Yukon to get the man who framed him. Apparently, that's not the only reason he came here. A man answering his description has just robbed the express office. He shot the constable on guard. I want you to find Jackson, Sergeant, and bring him in. Right, sir. Let's go, King. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Solitaire Jackson has a dangerous reputation. But why should he rob the express office if his real motive is to get revenge on the man who framed him? Perhaps there's more to this case than the inspector realizes. More mystery, more criminals involved, and more danger for Sergeant Preston. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals Shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.